the next few minutes, we want to look at some of these stories that we've been mentioning and some others indeed. In a bit more detail, we've got Tom Spencer with us, Chief Organiser of the London Neoliberals and a Young Voices UK contributor. Tom, good morning. Hey, Callum, it's great to be here. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. Uh, lots of strands that we're trying to pull together this morning around coronavirus, the vaccine, vaccine supply, etc. Um, and let's let's start with that, shall we, with the vaccine supply, because it's been a badge of honour for the UK since, since the vaccine started being rolled out over the last few months. Uh, and now it turns out that there will be a, well, it's being described as a four-week supply drought by the Times this morning. And this is going to dent confidence, isn't it? And the enthusiasm that the, and the goodwill, frankly, that the government was was building up because of the success of the vaccine rollout. Uh, uh, yeah, definitely. Um, the uh, vaccine rollout had been sort of the greatest success that uh, the government have had in a very very long time. It's seen uh, c- cases a day drop from sixty thousand in uh, January to just under six thousand just two months. Uh, later. Um, as a result of that, we've seen thousands and thousands of lives saved. So it's it's uh, d- uh, definitely concerning for a lot of people that um, this may seem see a slowdown, especially for those under the age of uh, 50 who've now learned that they may have to wait even longer to be sufficiently protected against the virus. Yeah, exactly. I think it's really interesting. You know, we've had a text from Steve in Oxfordshire this morning, number 32 in our early breakfast club, who says, feeling a little deflated this morning with what appears to be the first chinks in our vaccination armour. And that's that's how very much how this is going to sort of be perceived and how this is going to play out, isn't it? That we're, that we're not invincible when it comes to the vaccine uh, rollout. And, you know, as is so often the case, in fact, that the line of, uh, of yesterday's briefing was from Jonathan Van Tam, who said, vaccines don't save lives and they're in fridges. They only save lives if they're in arms and so this kind of builds on uh, you know vaccine supply problems but then also political problems with the eu and the eu's rollout of of the vaccine and uh, and dominic rab's comments that the eu is acting like a dictatorship over uh, vaccine supplies um, and sort of suggesting that the eu might try to kind of access and indeed use emergency powers to grab its fair share of vaccines from britain so in terms of the politics of this this morning tom uh, what's your reading of Ursula von der Leyen's determination to try to secure more vaccine supply, which um, which may involve apparently taking some from Britain. Uh, I think her reasons behind it are s- something which people can understand. In that, uh, for example, uh, Europe has had loads and loads of, uh, of problems with vaccines. However, I don't think anyone can justify um, the extreme extent that she seems to be uh, willing to go to uh, stop that. Things like uh, confiscating production plants and tearing up uh, uh, patent uh, uh, controls are absolutely uh, ridiculous. And you would never expect a supposedly uh, sort of liberal bloc to be even uh, considering such an attack on the... uh, uh, rights of uh, contract uh, in any uh, s- s- scenario, especially again, a country which is meant to be an uh, ally. It's really interesting, isn't it? So this is Article 122, which allows the European Commission to make a proposal to EU leaders for measures, this is the quote, measures appropriate to the economic situation, in particular if severe difficulties arise in the supply of certain products. So it's an emergency power in the EU's treaty to get the vaccination programme back on track. Um, And I suppose it sort of follows that actually the problem has been of the EU's own making, really, hasn't it? Is, is, Is that fair to say in terms of its procurement process in terms of getting access to the vaccine over the last few months it just it simply has fallen behind and, and hasn't been good enough compared to the uk sure i would absolutely agree uh, with that we saw that they approved uh, the vaccines too late that will slow th- things down absolutely uh, from the uh, get-go um there's been lots and lots of uh, problems in uh, different countries. We famously saw an entire batch go to waste in Germany due to uh, fridge problems. It's loads of little stupid things like this which shouldn't actually happen in a modern uh, 
a wealthy country. Um, and uh, the final straw has been that the weak drafting of of a, a contract has led to um, when AstraZeneca has been uh, struggling, we have ended up getting extra uh, vaccines, which they have not purely because our contract is a better uh, drafted uh, a contract. Mm. That's a really interesting thought. And just as a final kind of strand in all of this COVID news that's around this morning and vaccine news, so we saw Dominic Cummings appearing uh, before MPs yesterday, of course, the Prime Minister's former senior advisor. Um, uh, some of, I mean, some of the things he said were, were predictably forceful. Uh, uh, he said the health department's initial response to the coronavirus was an absolute total disaster because of failings over procurement. He said the department was a smoking ruin in terms of procurement and PPE. Uh, he also said that the UK rejected the opportunity to join the EU's vaccine procurement programme because it was an absolutely guaranteed programme to fail debacle. Uh, so it's, it's nice that Dominic Cummings is as plain spoken as his reputation would have uh, led us to believe he would be. Um, I think as well, interesting to sort of tie this in then with, with suggestions uh, around an inquiry which have been growing this week and perhaps feeding into this as well, new analysis from the Resolution Foundation think tank claiming that uh, delaying the winter lockdown caused up to 27,000 extra deaths in England, accusing the government of a huge mistake which should be central to any public inquiry into the UK's handling of the pandemic. Uh, the, cr the crucial question, I suppose, Tom, around, around the inquiry, there's a kind of feeling that one will happen and so it's it's about when but there seems it feels like there's growing pressure from from basically all sides for it to kick start now uh, hey, i think there is very much an attitude that although covid is not over we can finally start to work out what issues were made and there were a very famously huge amount of uh, problems. We saw unclear advice on masks. We saw unclear uh, advice on social distancing. We uh, ended up uh, like actually going into a, a lockdown about two weeks uh, later than our sort of uh, European neighbours with uh, similar cases but um the one thing which i did find quite comforting about the appearance yesterday is the uh the public emphasis that he gave on the role of uh, science um if we are to respond quickly to future covid and non-covid illnesses we need to be able to produce new vaccines new treatments etc as quickly as humanly uh, possible and coming seem to have a lot of insistence that that is the future of uh written that he sees. Mm, mm. It's quite a, quite a box office performance from Dominic Cummings, <laughs> uh, as one might imagine. Uh, Tom, I appreciate you guiding us through some of these stories this morning. Uh, thank you for that. There's, there's lots to chat about around COVID, uh, so thank you for your time. Thanks for being up early for us. That's Tom Spencer, Chief Organiser of the London Neoliberals, Young Voices UK contributor as well. Lovely to have Tom on our programme this morning.